We're continuing our Black History Month celebration with the story of an unsung hero. His name is Leroy Homer. He was an African-American co-pilot of United Airlines Flight 93. That plane crashed on September 11th in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. A recently here and now spoke with his widow, Melody Homer, about his heroic actions on that day and her plans to keep his legacy alive. Leroy Homer Jr. was the first officer and co-pilot of United Flight 93, headed to San Francisco the morning of September 11th. My husband got up for work like he normally did. Um, he was flying out of Newark that day, so when he flew out of, um, mostly he flew out of Kennedy, that's a two-hour drive. Um, Newark, he, he didn't have to get up quite so early, but he didn't wake me up when he left. He didn't wake me up, he didn't wake our daughter was 10 months old. I had, I had the TV on as the second plane was hitting. So um, I did call uh, United Airlines and to see if everything was okay with my husband. And um, at the time, everything was okay. And they were able to send a message to my husband in the cockpit um, through the computer system, saying that you know, um, just wanted to make sure you were okay. So, um, and the cockpit did receive that message. And that was, um, you know, several minutes before, um, you know, of course, the, the hijackers were able to make it to the cockpit. Um, the cockpit did respond to later messages regarding, um, you know, when the dispatcher, United Dispatcher, alerted, alerted them to the fact that they needed to be aware of cockpit intrusions because two aircraft had um, hit the World Trade Center, they responded to that message saying, please confirm your last message. So they were still, at, you know, up until that point, they were still in control of, of the cockpit. A decade after, Melody Homer is on a mission to set the record straight about her husband and his crew's heroic acts before crashing in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. When the cockpit voice recorder was released, um, it was, we realized that my husband was not killed um, initially. Um, the, the other pilot, um, Captain Dahl, was not killed immediately. He was wounded, and we can hear him on the cockpit voice recorder. Um, for whatever reason, my husband was removed by the terrorist f from the cockpit, but um, because my husband and Captain Dahl had had advance warning, um, the hijackers were unable to fly the plane without the, the automatic pilot was um, jammed or they were not, unable to get it off. And she gives credit to the passengers of Flight 93. You know, I've always said that the passengers who did, you know, come forward and, you know, try to thwart the hijacking, nothing should be taken away from them but unfortunately what has happened is then the crew is often ignored in the coverage. First of all when we first listened to the cockpit voice recorder we signed confidentiality agreements with the government because the Musawi trial was still pending. Now some people chose to disregard those. I chose to honor the commitment I signed because someone involved with this was being prosecuted and I didn't think it was my place to try to raise my husband up, you know, to when we're trying to make sure that this individual is held responsible and held accountable. Then once the Musawi trial concluded, um, it concluded right, right before um, United 93 came out the movie. So of course everybody thought they already knew this story and then, you know, Oftentimes, the first story that comes out is the one that people will believe. After years of dealing with the pain of losing her husband, she decided to write a book, From Where I Stand. I guess some of that frustration um, led to me writing the book. Um, on the other hand, there's people who are always going to think, let's roll, and that's going to be their version of events, and there's nothing I can do to change that. For aspiring young pilots, the sky's the limit, thanks to the Leroy Homer Foundation she established. Well, the foundation was established to support young adults who want to become professional pilots. We wanted to do something that uh, was really indicative of my husband's journey 
So his first step was getting his private pilot's license. And um, I would say the majority of the people that receive the scholarship are either seniors or um, in the 11th grade because in that time period they've shown you know that they have an academic potential you know their GPA is looks good they've gotten they've had time to show leadership she's convinced the foundation will provide them the skills that helped her husband's career soar he, he never thought about doing anything else as long from you know as long as he could remember he was fascinated by flight he served you know he served his country he was a major in the Air Force he did a lot of um, humanitarian missions to countries like Somalia. He was not a proud man, so he just is very humble about it. He just served his country, and I feel like he served his country that day as well. Sandra Bookman and Here and Now will be right back.